What is up, punks? It's Shinobi, and we are bringing you a special edition of Block Digest on... I just forgot what day it is, guys. <laughs> Tuesday, uh, January 5th, 2021, uh, with Dennis and Kooks from BTC Pay Server Project to talk about the Lightning Bank uh, tool that Dennis is working on. So what is up, guys? Hello, peers. <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah, uh, so I guess you want me to talk about what the Allen Bank actually is, right? <laughs> uh, I, I think the, that'd be a good starter point. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> so uh, Allen Bank is a project in the context of the BTC Pay Server uh, where we try to build a, a layer three solution on top of the Lightning Network where people uh, can use the internal BTC Pay Lightning node and make it available to uh, others as well so uh, that other people can use it in a custodial fashion, and that's where the name Allen Bank uh, comes from. And I'm assuming that um, at least from the initial conception of the idea, you guys had kind of a more merchant side um, use in mind for this, I'm assuming, given the, the fact BTC Pay allows multiple people to kind of set up a, an account on one server. But that kind of brings up interesting questions about, well, how does that work uh, with a lightning node or second layers like that? Yeah, so it started off uh, with me just uh, wanting to uh, tinker a bit um, because uh, my initial plan uh, for for approaching the lightning network was uh, building something i could uh, pay my kids pocket money <laughs> with that and uh, so uh, i i needed something uh, to yeah host hosts uh, some kind of uh, node in a custodial fashion and um, the Allen Bank project isn't the first of this kind because there are other solutions like Allen Bits or uh, LND Hub um, out there. And um, yeah, um, so when I thought about how to implement it, uh, I uh, I wanted to solve this use case <laughs> by uh, for paying my my kids' pocket money with Lightning. And uh, then I started to to tinker with it, build it on top of BTC Pay because that's easy to set up. I have uh, a node running uh, already, and uh, yeah, things uh, went uh, downhill from there. Uh, it's, it's exciting to to build on top of BTC Pay because. Um, at the same time, while I was building this, uh, Cooks was building out the API, and uh, some some more interesting use cases came up, like reusing the existing user accounts uh, of the BTC Pay instance for uh, for apps like Allen Bank as well. And uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> that's right now what what we are working on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of funny too. I mean. The stuff that you wanted to build, it's stuff that's been in the pipeline for a long time as well. Like I think we have an issue asking for like a sharing your Lightning node on BTC Pay from like two and a half years ago. Um, it's just we never had the time to do it. And I actually I think in during Ellen Kampf in 2019 in Berlin, I started trying to port over and D Hub to um, to BTC Pay, but I gave up after a bit of time. So it's nice that you picked it up. And yeah, with the API stuff, it's also been planned for a year and a half. And I'm glad that you uh, make are making use of the best of the newer newer stuff that we're building. Yeah, and uh, I have some some merchants uh, here in Germany as well uh, that that uh, try to uh, make available the uh, Lightning Node of of their instance uh, to to friends and family. Uh, other merchants as well and without a setup uh, like Allen Bank where you can yeah easily distinguish accounts uh, etc it's it's kind of hard to do this because uh, the bookkeeping stuff turns into a nightmare <laughs> that's actually you know something I have thought about for a while and honestly I hadn't even considered like pinging anybody at BTC pay until I saw uh, the Allen Bank stuff you're working on because uh 
it, our instance for the, the shirt store that me and Mr. Hoddle run, it, it's still just us using it. But I, I've always like had in the back of my mind, like if there's somebody I know well enough who was trying to set up a server or wanted to use one, they could just have an account on ours. But you know, that's always been in the back of my mind, like, well, I'm not going to give anybody access to the lightning side of things because that gets a little wonky trying to manage shit. And would I trust somebody um, <laughs> enough to just give them kind of full access to all the funds on lightning? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. And the uh, BTC Pay, the new BTC Pay API uh, has a more granular uh, permission model uh, for for all those things uh, which Cook is uh, right now working on, and uh, this this will give give you the ability to uh, more uh, have have more fine grained control about uh, what kind of features uh, you open up to other people. Yeah, and I mean in the beginning, actually, like I think it's been around a year now. The first thing I tried to do. Like as the the easiest path to allow people to use the same Lightning node was in the server settings. You can say allow people to use the same Lightning node to accept payments, but they wouldn't be able to spend from it. Um, but you still end up with the accounting nightmare that uh, you know trying to figure out who has how much money in their Lightning into this one Lightning node, uh, depending on the store you're using and all that stuff. So it's quite a big improvement with uh, with the LN Bank. Yeah, but in the same way, it's it's just a thin layer on on top of the uh, internal BTC Pay Lightning node and uh, some some kind of API voodoo. Uh, but in the end, it's it's just this uh, yeah thin thin accounting layer on top of it. Yeah, you know, that that's actually kind of something I wanted to talk about. Um, like nuts and bolts under the hood, <clears throat> like how exactly are the accounts managed and um, kind of kept track of? Because, um, you know, th th this is kind of the same thing as a lightning channel itself. Like all of that balance information related to who should have control of how much funds on the lightning node, like that's kind of a very important piece of state to track um, in the same way that the channels itself are. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. this is probably simpler than a than a Lightning channel overall, right, Dennis? Yeah, it's it's just uh, some uh, some numbers in a database because that's what banks do. Okay, and so, like, ha have you guys been thinking like how to handle backing that up, or maybe authenticating a backup if something were to happen, necessitating that? Um, you know, pr pretty much any any kind of way to handle this because it, it would be a much different situation versus recovering a lightning channel. Like, but you know, how do you handle if something happens to that database um, and there's some kind of dispute there? Yeah, depending on your use case, uh, this can be a, a, a whole topic in itself. I mean, uh, things vary here from or. It is a spectrum from from uh, me offering uh, uh, this or using this as uh, a way to pay out the, the money for my kids uh, from uh, someone else using this as a professional uh, solution to to manage something <laughs> like uh, like a lightning bank and uh, yeah of course uh, the backup uh, story has to be thought about but right now it's it's uh, just me uh, trying to flesh out the the use case for a, a zero dot one version and uh, us getting everything ready to to uh, release the first beta version people can can play with. Uh, so uh, yeah, right right now the backup story isn't isn't covered. Uh, to answer your question on it, honestly, uh, but in the end uh, it will be uh, yeah just doing doing a regular uh, database backup like like you do with every other database as well yeah and i'm guessing if you're also talking about light since we're also talking about lighting it would also be backing up your lightning nodes um in terms of bdc pay we're still kind of trying to figure out the best way to do this since we can't really just use one standard backup format from one of the lightning nodes. so for example nnd has their own c lightning has their own and everybody does their own little magic 
But since PTC Pay has like support for three different Lightning nodes, it's a bit trickier. Um, I remember somebody wrote a backup script for PTC Pay, like a general purpose one, which would back up the data, which would include also LN Bank at this point and a bunch of other stuff, but it never really took off enough. So it's something we have to keep an eye out on figuring it out eventually. Uh, not just for LN Bank's sake, but even for BTC Pay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, don't, don't take questions like this. Like, I'm trying to grill you guys. Like, <clears throat> um, just a, a lot of what I wanted to kind of talk about in this, uh, given how early this is, is the, the type of, like, long-term solutions for, like, issues or use cases like this. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah sure. You know, like, um, for instance, like, uh, you know, regarding backups of the LN Bank database and stuff, I mean, I, I think a, a decent way to handle that would kind of be to sign those with the identity key of the Lightning node. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm assuming when this really launches, it's mostly going to be people with a, a solid amount of trust between them using it. But I, I feel like just kind of having... Um, that lightning nodes ID key sign off on something like that could go a long way towards expanding the use of this outside of close knit um, trust groups like that. You know, you could actually have something publicly um, signed by a public lightning node. And if somebody doesn't respect the backup or a, a state, um, you know, they try to play games with that then you have something you can throw out there publicly and be like, do not trust this node. Um, like they're not honoring the balances that they're supposed to have for people. Yeah, uh, something like that would be possible. But uh, right now we, we just haven't thought about uh, things like that because it's, it's so early. <laughs> Well, I hope by the end of the show, then you'll have a, a long list of autistic ideas from Shinobi's head. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, uh, that's uh, that's a great thing to take away <laughs> from this uh, for us. But um, if I'm correct, um, th this is using the new um, plugin system um, that's getting set up for BTC Pay, correct? Not right now, because uh, it started out uh, oh. as a stand standalone application. Uh, like my my original idea was uh, to build it alongside uh, a BTC Pay instance, uh, so that it can be uh, deployed separately, like we are doing uh, it with the BTC Transmuter project, uh, for instance. But uh, then uh, Cooks <laughs> came up with the uh, concept of plugins in BTC Pay. And uh, yeah, he nagged me uh, to, to <laughs> refactor it and rebuild it uh, as a plugin, which we will uh, tackle uh, most likely to the next month. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see if we can get to it in the next month. <laughs> I mean, the plugin system is very experimental right now, so... Um, and also, I also came up with the plugin system also came after he started working on the LN bank thing. So we'll probably be tackling it in, from both ends. Uh, and I don't know, I, I feel like maybe we could also put in like a hybrid mode so we can have LN bank either run as a plugin inside BTC pay or as a separate thing completely as well. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. So yeah, more of a no, long term, um, shift things over there once they're in a, a better uh, condition. Yeah, and in a, in a way, this gives us uh, the ability to flesh out the plugin system with a non-trivial use case. Um, so uh, moving or making the Allen Bank a plugin uh, will, uh, will benefit the plugin system as well, I think. Okay, so you, you're kind of looking at Allen Bank as like the first major thing to be ported out of BTC proper into plugins and kind of using that to flesh out the uh, the plugin API and stuff. Yeah, I think I think that's going to be the mostly the first one. Um, I got some other ideas. Well, I, I, like I was experimenting a few weeks ago with like a small plugin to allow like custom liquids assets to, uh, to be support, uh, but that's like a smaller project as well. Um, I th I think I think the LN Bank one will be the, the main, first major one. Okay. So what what exactly is kind of functionally operational right now and, and not uh in terms of 
like the the actual back end, the front end. Um, I know, uh, Dennis, you're kind of planning on making a general API for this. Um, I'm assuming you haven't really gotten too far at this point with that. Um, so when you uh, go to the GitHub repo, I, I tried to do a summary uh, in the readme of the project as well and uh, try to um, record a few uh, GIFs with uh, what you can do already uh, to showcase it on Twitter. And I think uh, that's also how you came uh, <laughs> across the project because uh, right now, officially, there there is no release and uh, uh, you, you can't uh, deploy it. Uh, but uh, to answer your question, um, what, what you can do is you can um, the uh, yeah deploy the instance locally uh, running alongside BTC Pay server. You can um, uh, go to the the login, which then takes you to the BTC Pay instance the Allen Bank is connected to. You can uh, sign sign in uh, with a BTC Pay API key that gets generated for the for the Allen Bank. Um, this authentication flow is, is kind of nice because uh, when you are signed in to the BTC Pay instance already, uh, this this feels very natural, like uh, the OAuth um, authentication people uh, are used to already. Everything uh, gets set up. You uh, uh, come to the Ellen Bank homepage where you see uh, your, your accounts. The first uh, account uh, gets created for you. And uh, from there, uh, you would uh, set up uh, the, the wallet, um, which uh, means you have to create an invoice, uh, which you have to, to pay from, um, from somewhere. So um, uh, the Allen Bank uh, creates a lightning invoice using the internal BTC Pay API node, uh, and you can fund your wallet paying that invoice. And from from there, you can uh, then, uh, once your wallet is funded, uh, send out those funds uh, and pay uh, regular Lightning invoices, uh, which are either internal Allen Bank ones or uh, or some uh, some invoice that's uh, yeah from another uh, node. So just a pretty basic uh, web wallet. Yeah, yeah. Um, as I as I said, it's it's uh, most uh, most uh, of this is just a thin accounting layer on top of uh, of the BTC Pay Lightning node, and um, we've also integrated it uh, so that an Allen Bank wallet can be used as a Lightning node inside of BTC Pay. Um, for that, uh, people would have to be familiar uh, with setting up a Lightning node in BTC Pay. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, basically, basically, uh, once you've uh, set up an Allen Bank wallet, you can can use it as a uh, as a separate Lightning wallet in in your BTC Pay instance as well. So uh, this this is kind of uh, kind of a wallet inception. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, you can even take it a bit further than that. Like, you can you can use the Ellen Bank uh, wallet inside of other BTC Pay servers as well. So it's like uh, you're connecting from one BTC Pay server to use its Lightning node to another one, and you kind of generate invoices on the separate node, and you know you can you kind of relay it through the through the API of the Ellen Bank stuff. So kind of like. Um... UI wise, something like what Spectre does, where you can just have all of the different wallets, um, key sets all in one user interface and just abstract that away from the user. Yeah, right. And uh, one of the main abstractions uh, for, for non technical users is uh, that they don't, as an Allen Bank user, they don't have to care about uh, managing channels, uh, balancing them. Uh, um, caring about uh, the uh, liquidity, etc. Uh, all of that is abstracted away. They just uh, see their lightning balance in each of their wallets and uh, yeah, they are good to go. So um, <clears throat> did you guys see um, 
the I think it was last month um, in December, uh, Rusty Russell's proposal for lightning offers and kind of changing the entire invoice flow for things. That's what he presented at the lightning conference in Berlin, right? I am not sure, but probably. Uh, I'll, I'll trust yeah. Cux on this one. Yeah, it's it's that one. It's the one where it's as far as I know, it's another layer on top of the invoicing. Though it's like um, you can kind of say, "I want to request an invoice from this person," and then you send a it sends a message through some protocol thing, and then it returns a bolt of living invoice back to the user. Mm -hmm. But a, a big part of it, though, is being able to get a series of them um, for things like you know monthly yeah. or weekly payments. Um, I yeah, think yeah. that this web interface, um, and really any wallet, um, once the API is finished, I think that LN Bank would make the absolute perfect wallet for those types of payments over Lightning. Because, it, you know, once some um, LN offer, if that's actually rolled into an official bolt and nodes start implementing it, um, like you guys could just build out a UI and functionality here for me to say, open an account on a, a bank instance, um, get a bunch of offers for say my monthly Spotify subscription. And all I have to do is press one button and that's always online. That can always track the time, always see when the next invoice has to be paid and just pay it. Like I, I don't have to come online and think about this or remember you know, the start of the month, pay that. As long as I don't go into my LN bank wallet and say, stop paying this, if I have money in there, it's just always online and can always just blast off that payment without me even having to think about it. Yeah, that sounds like a good use case. And uh, as, as well, uh, from, a, from a bookkeeping or personal bookkeeping uh, perspective, this would also be great because uh, for all those services like Spotify, Netflix or whatever, you could uh, set up a separate Allen Bank wallet and uh, yeah, have them take, take money from there. Mm -hmm. Or like even like roll it into a, an even simpler UI and just have somebody able to set a percentage threshold of the wallet to spend it or a maximum amount or how many months to pay it before you send me a message to go, do you still want this? I mean, there's some of that stuff actually in the, what's it called, the web uh, uh, I think, is it a protocol at this point? Uh, it's the one where, where they have the extension in the browser, I think it's Jewel. Yeah. I think they were working. They are working towards that kind of goal too, like having a recurring uh, payments and thresholds as well. But uh, it all depends as well. I mean, Allen Bank would work quite well with that concept as well, since it's always online and it's uh, on a reachable domain. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, Joule has this concept of allowances, which is kind of similar. Um, but I don't know if, uh, if Joule is uh, still still getting actively uh, worked on right now. Yeah, I think um, it's been a while since I've heard some big things about it. Yeah, I don't think I've heard anything about it for a, a year or so. Yeah, but uh, then again, I mean, uh, uh, the Allen Bank could also be a, a backend or a, a backing wallet for, for something like Jewel, which you hook up to, uh, to your Lightning node. And uh, for all the, the main use cases, Allen Bank and its wallets also uh, have an API already. Uh, that was one of your uh, previous questions as well, um, which, uh, which we, we had to build the API to uh, do this integration stuff into BTC Pay and make it available as a, um, uh, as a Lightning Node wallet to BTC Pay. Um, BTC Pay has this Lightning abstraction library uh, where you can uh, add um, several wallet implementations and Allen Bank, uh, uh, there's, there's a pull request uh, for making Allen Bank another uh, of those implementations and uh, the use cases there are like uh, uh, sending and receiving funds, uh, opening panels, etc. And for all those use cases, uh, there are APIs already. Yeah, so 
it's kind of like Ellen Bank is treated as if it was a whole lightning node on its own inside BTC Pay. So if you if you have your own store on BTC Pay and you're just uh, you create an Ellen Bank account somewhere else, you can just uh, kind of set it up as and BTC Pay would treat it as if it was a own lightning node. Okay, so it's kind of acting just like a piece of middleware between the lightning node and BTC Pay. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Right. Speaking of the API, though, um, like really, how like flexible are you thinking long term of making that um, for like third party wallets to hook up to this? Like, are, are you thinking just kind of keep it as minimal and basic as possible, like just send, receive, so on? Or are you guys thinking of uh, kind of deeper things that you could safely allow a wallet to hook into and control um, as far as node operations, like potentially have, um, you know, channel backups, um, depending on your authorization level. Um, you know, like I brought up earlier, the idea of having a lightning node sign um, an att or attestation to your current balance with the node and things like that. Yeah, I mean, as long as there are valid, uh use cases, uh, sky is the limit. <laughs> I mean, uh, the the things I'm thinking about short term are uh, uh, stuff like uh, LNURL integration and um, offering uh, ways to hook up external wallets uh, via that. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a nice uh, authentication layer uh, if you're thinking about moving beyond like a, a web wallet login through BTC pay itself I mean there there is this one limitation in ours uh, where basically if we add a feature to the API we have to ensure that all that we support all the implementations so we would have to make sure that it works in LND C lightning and uh, Eclair at the same time yeah, okay. but that's that's for the general uh, Lightning API. I think what Shinobi was referring to uh, was the the separate Allen Bank API, which sits on top of the general Lightning API. Or did I misunderstand that? No, I mean yeah. it's a bit of both, right? I mean, if yeah, you want to do a attestation or whatever, you have to it has to come from this uh, from the Lightning node itself. So. We would have to support it in the BTC Pay Lightning API, and then Ellen Bank would have to piggyback on that and add its own features on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty yeah. much, um, like every new feature you would add to the Ellen Bank API, you have to go now make that work with three separate APIs for each Lightning implementation. Uh, I got that yeah, right. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Alrighty. Are you guys ready for a fully autistic idea? Bring it. So something I have been thinking about for actually a little while um, before I even saw you were working on this, Dennis, is um, when we get Schnorr and Musig, um, what's to stop a single endpoint in a lightning channel from itself being a multi-sig? So rather than your lightning channel being a two of two, it's a one guy on one side of the channel and a multi-sig of, say, three people on the other. So four people all together with three on one side um, and just using Schnorr and Musig to roll that up into one efficient key to sign with. And you could effectively federate um, one side of a lightning channel. And the instant I saw um, LN Bank, I immediately started thinking about multiple BTC pay servers effectively making a virtual um, lightning node that's federated um, to drop LN Bank on top of so that you could effectively have this custodial third layer without having to trust a single node operator. This is where I'm really glad that I brought Cooks with me because he's been uh, thinking along similar lines. So Cooks, uh, here's your opportunity. <laughs> well, uh, it's still a bit different from what I uh, I have planned for BBC Pay, but the way you described that, it sounds a lot more like the like the idea from Andrew from Blockstream um, around the 
Lightning Channel factories, if you've uh, read about that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think it's similar to that a bit, right? Um, I would say to a degree, but rather than making an actual factory or set of uh, top level channels on it, you would just have that two sided regular channel, so to say, except everybody's custodying with the Federation. I mean, it, uh, I would have to flesh it out a bit more, but I think the idea, so uh, let me take it a step back. Um, I've been for the for the plugin system. I've been kind of looking into maybe doing some more crazy like like out there ideas as well. So one of them would be like having BTC Pay server instances kind of connect to each other and allow like not. Well, I guess you can call it a federation um, where they can kind of do communications between each other and kind of coordinate stuff. Um, I guess one of those things could be like coordinating a. Uh, stores to have a multi-sig together and i guess from that situation depending on the lightning node and, uh, and how much they they support this kind of stuff uh, we could always end up in a situation where we use those multi-sigs which are coordinated between two btc pay server instances to to kind of create a multi-sig uh, uh, lightning channel together I, I don't know if that's closer to what you're getting at yeah i mean like, and I, I think, um, although don't quote me on this here, I think if uh, Sea Lightning implemented Schnorr support, um, their hook and plug-in system should allow just kind of playing games with what gets thrown into the channel negotiation. But, you know, with Musig, it's just as simple as, you know, you would usually take one key and I would take one key and we open a Lightning channel together. Just think instead of just me, um, there's three other people who make a single um, like Musig Schnorr address, which gets handed off to you. So from your point of view, you're in just a normal lightning channel um, and you can't really tell any difference. But from my point of view, I have two other people with a three of three multi-sig and that's my side of the channel. So my side would be kind of federated, but yours would look totally normal. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get it, actually. Um, yeah, I don't see why why that would be a big issue, right? I mean, it depends as well. I think Sea Lightning has the capability of kind of defining your own funding source because um, they have the plugin system as well. Uh, I think also another possibility is with uh, the Rust Lightning implementation because they also allow you to kind of build your own wallet system that you integrate the Lightning node they're, they're building with. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, the whole Moosey thing is going to be kind of wild as well as soon as it comes out and we add all the short magic to it. I mean, I, I just can't stop thinking in directions like that because it's... You know, I, I love Lightning Network, but sitting here from my point of view right now, I just don't see how this scales to any meaningful way if the entire world tries to stampede into Bitcoin. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, I mean, I mean, nobody's going to, you can't expect like everybody to just say, okay, I'm going to run a, a Lightning node at this point, because it's kind of hard to actually run it, right? With, especially with all the backup stuff you want to do if you i mean i don't i wouldn't want to put two two thousand bucks on it and you know the next day it gets uh, deleted on a server that i've been renting you know and it, it kind of happens as well like the other day my my lightning node got uh went down for a few days just because i had a tor relay on the same server and i got ddos like crazy for it mm -hmm. and it's just like you know so many things stop it from scaling just the technical overhead the block size like the the cost of opening and closing a channel and something like lightning bank is a perfect solution to that like how many people can just sit on top of one node that i'm running like family friends people who trust me and just interact with things through that and not have to worry about those issues. Like one of the things I have griped about for years is everybody is building these tools to let like technically competent Bitcoiners do all kinds of, you know, fun, interesting things. But 
where's the tools for those Bitcoiners to hold the hands of their friends and family and people around them without that being a massive active headache? Like yeah. LN Bank is that. Yeah, that's uh, that's where this is coming from. Uh, as I uh, said in the introduction, I mean, there there are pros and cons to to all of this. Uh, the pros, obviously, being that onboarding gets way easier because uh, people <laughs> people like us can uh, be the Uncle Jim uh, for for their friends and family. But uh, depending on uh, on the use case or what you build this into, uh, there are also some some cons. Like uh, we we don't uh, want uh, people to to use uh, custodial solutions more than uh, than absolutely necessary. And uh, so yeah, <laughs> I mean uh, yeah, you you can can see it from both sides. Yeah, and I I can appreciate that, but you know, I know a lot of people that like i just the idea of them holding their own keys terrifies me because they have no clue what they're doing you know what i mean like a, a friend that i finally convinced to buy like 20 bucks of bitcoin um why not just send it to my btc pay over ln bank just hold that there for a little bit yeah sure and, but then again you uh, you uh as as uh, this third or fourth layer scales up. Uh, I mean, we are kind of kind of building uh, a trust based system, uh, which we are trying to get away from in the first place. Yeah, but you know, I I don't really see those kind of issues as black and white. You know, like would I want somebody to go run off and just use Coinbase because they don't know what they're doing? Um, no, I, I wouldn't. But you know, trusting somebody in your family, a, a good friend, like somebody you know really well. I, I don't see introducing that kind of trust um, anywhere as the same as like go use Coinbase. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I, I get that. And uh, yeah, for for this friends and family use case, uh, I, I think it, it totally makes sense. But I can also see the point where uh, all of those kinds of solutions are becoming uh, so normal in in Bitcoin way down the road that uh, yeah uh, <laughs> some branch of of the ecosystem turns into trust based solutions again. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't see how that's avoidable. Um, like, I I really don't. Um, yeah, I not, think that's not for the grandma uh, case. Uh, that's that's okay, but uh, I was I was just uh, thinking uh, how how this might negatively affect uh, what we are trying to build and uh, what uh, what we want to people to uh, turn or grow into. I mean, that just comes down to scaling. Um, you know, really, how many people can take custody of Bitcoin on chain themselves? Like for what kind of amounts does that economically make sense? You know, like just yesterday I uh, bought some corn on a cash app to load an open dime. Um, I'm just going to hand it out. And I looked at the transaction and realized that like half of the amounts in outputs were just the, the same kind of tiny amount I threw on this open dime. Like how much of that is going to get burned away in fees down the line? Yeah, ouch. <laughs> and it's just, you know, like I, I think that dynamic is really inescapable. But I think what can be done is rather than letting those dynamics force people into things like Cash App or Coinbase, um, you know, tools like LN Bank can be there instead. And I mean, I see a lot more potential synergy in terms of building this out than just somebody can receive a little bit to a lightning account with me and then spend it. I mean, somebody could just constantly be stacking sats into their account with my LN bank. And, you know, there's no reason you couldn't also um, have a person using that register an on-chain wallet with that BTC pay server. 
and just a very simple automated user flow of, oh, you've stacked up a significant amount or amount of money on LN Bank, click this button and that gets sub swapped out to your on chain wallet. And yeah, you just kind yeah. of build that that funnel into this where you know somebody's kind of just coming up, loading a little money custodially, maybe a little more. And then eventually when they have enough to make it worth redeeming on chain, be like, hey dude, click this button and do that. Yeah, uh, doing on-chain integration or uh, yeah, adding adding some kind of on-chain functionality uh, looks like it's it will be on the on the Allen bank roadmap too um we would have to rename the project then well no i mean you don't have to even build it directly into Allen bank just have the api hook up to btc pay proper and go you know where's the xpub on chain for this guy's Allen bank account give me that so that i can go do a sub swap to there but you don't really have to build that into this proper. Just let it hook up to that through BTC Pay. Well, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. Go ahead, Cooks. <laughs> I just wanted yeah, to yeah. introduce this uh, be because you've also thought about this. I mean, th there's also a huge demand from our end about uh, kind of adding some kind of custodial mode for for on chain as well as off chain. So off off chain, Ellen Bank kind of solves that issue as well since there's a whole balance system involved and stop accounts and all that thing. Um, but we also get this, uh, we get a lot of questions like people want to use BTC pay and they just want to build a, a bit pay clone where they can just say, okay, now I'm a commercial Bitcoin processor. We don't, we don't do KYC. We might be slightly legal, but that's okay. We don't give a shit. Um, and I'm completely okay with that. I like the idea as well. I mean, like you were saying as well, it doesn't scale to have like everybody forcing everybody to kind of figure out wallets and custody and all that stuff. So if if you can get 100 people to use the same BTC pay instance and you can help them out with uh, with managing their custody until they actually figure out uh, figure out uh, how to do that stuff on their own and realize that they have enough money that they should be doing it on their own. Um, it's something that should be ha available to people to do. And if you're a if you're a host as well on BTC Pay and you want to charge some fees on top of that, I think it also makes sense, right? Um, so one way to do it would be to so for Ellen Bank right now, it's basically uh, you create an account and you have a balance and you can generate and receive invoices for on the Lightning Network using uh, Bolt Eleven. Uh, one thing we could add on top would be to also add an on-chain thing. Uh, so the the server would have a uh, a seed or xpub and then all the sub accounts would would have a uh, another uh, well an xpub based on that seed or a derivation of the xpub that was provided and then we could they could actually just uh, grab that xpub put it into btc pay and just start accepting payments directly to their bank account and they probably wouldn't even give a shit if it was on chain or off chain because they they have no clue what the fuck the difference is right so it would just be a one click setup they would start accepting money and it would just be directly in one account. It's, it's similar to what they do with the uh, Phoenix where there's no distinction between on-chain and off-chain. It's really amazing on how they do it. Um, we would be taking a step back from their uh, awesome stuff and just be making it a little bit simpler for merchants. You know, if you're doing um, a custodial setup like that anyway, um, that sounds like the perfect place to use bip 85 um if if the server just has like one master key and you're subdividing things like that just generate bip 85 seeds and then you could actually um you know hand those seeds out to whoever's account that is without putting anyone else's funds at risk is uh bip 85 uh the the thing uh the uh code guy card guys came up with um i'm not sure if cold card came up with it but they're the only ones who've implemented it that i know yeah. but where they, you they've recently the, pushed it right yeah where um you just kind of go down a derivation path and then use that to deterministically make a new seed uh it's like the the symmetric key not symmetric symmetric seed stuff right so you have a master seed and you can derive more seeds out of it like yeah. actual seeds yeah okay we actually were talking about this before the call yeah. as well, right? <laughs> that's that's funny, yeah. 
yeah, it's basically we uh, Dennis King uh, wanted to suggest it as well, but it might be a, a slight issue in the in the situation where you have people where there's funds coming in from Lightning and there's funds coming in from from uh, on chain, and you need to figure out as well like if you you can't you have to be careful that the people that are using the the system under Ellen Bank don't just try and suddenly sweep all the funds on the seeds and all of a sudden uh, try to kind of move funds, uh, kind of race, try to try to kind of game the system so that they withdraw all the money, all the balance that is appearing on the on Ellen Bank through Lightning and all the balance coming in through the seed. Uh, it, there, there are some gaming issues that you have to be careful of when you're doing that kind of stuff. Uh, well, yeah, you would have I'm to being clear. Yeah, I think I get you, but you know that that just means you just have to segregate the on-chain and off-chain balances. I mean, yeah, right, right, so that you could... Yeah, because otherwise you run into the problem uh, Kuz just mentioned. Mm -hmm. if, if the LN Bank abstracted that away, then you could just pull the off- and on-chain funds out, but also still sweep the seed that you were given from BIP85. Yeah, but other than that, uh, extending this to, to the on-chain part uh, would be... Uh, 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 handling uh, different addresses that got generated uh, via the uh, XPub, uh, just like uh, we are we are handling the uh, Lightning invoices right now. So uh, for for the Lightning part, this is uh, Bold Eleven, and for the on-chain part, this would be uh, just a separate address. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, since you you mentioned Kooks, um, the potential legal gray area of things like this um i i forget if um th this is just kind of mailing list conversation or if any of the lightning um implementations actually support this right now but ha have you guys considered or thought about um kind of creating new um virtual uh lightning node keys or ids for each account so that you um you know, you don't run into the potential of why are multiple people constantly giving the same lightning node ID to receive money to? Like, could this be a law-breaking custodial thing going on here? I, th I think that was in the, in the L&D proposals at one point, right? They had this, what was it called? I think it was like called a bakery or whatever. <laughs> Uh, where you can generate macaroons and they would have subic pounds built into it or something. Yeah, but that's uh, for the authorization. I think what uh, Shinobi was uh, getting at wa was uh, having having uh, a different pub key or identifier for each of the accounts or wallets, right? Yeah, pretty much like a fake virtual lightning node so that like... Uh if 10 people are constantly buying coins on like lightning strike and sending them to the same id like lightning strike doesn't go why are these 10 people all using the same lightning node yeah i i'm not that familiar with uh, the the specifications or uh, that part of the specifications uh, i don't know if this is considered already i i haven't heard of it yet either is it like a like a newer thing or no, no it's, it's just it's us like, uh thinking about it yeah i i remember on the i think on one of the mailing lists somewhere um it was brought up as a point of discussion but i don't recall ever seeing like any progress or implementation supporting that uh since then yeah but uh as uh, or from a, from a bookkeeping uh side uh it would be great to to have something like that as well uh yeah, I mean, so much potential here, man. I mean, we can keep on building forever at this point. Um, in terms of BTC pay backlog, it just keeps on growing day after day. I mean, I could put in 20 hours a day and it would still kind of overwhelm me at this point. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of amazing how you guys just keep steadily chugging forward like this project is starting to become so much more than just fuck you bit pay
Yeah, I actually, I think we actually got a comment about this. Like, I don't know why you guys keep mentioning BitPay, but I mean, you have a great project. Uh, what's up with all this uh, bitterness about it? And it's like people don't even know about the history of the project at this point. It's like we just use it because we found it. It's like the most popular thing around. So <laughs> it's it's really crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but whenever you bring uh, up a new feature you've thought about and uh, talk to uh, or talk about it to Cooks, he he has a branch in his Git uh, somewhere <laughs> and has been working on it already. I mean, yeah, this I mean, is it's a funny no, thing in this space. Everybody is constantly thinking things in their own little silos. And then when everybody comes out, it's like, oh, what? All of us were thinking of almost the same thing for the last six months. Yeah, it's so true as well. Um, there, like I remember uh, when I wanted to work on a similar feature to LM Bank, and it's like I think I spent maybe a week on it, and then uh, Dennis comes along and he he's like, "Yeah, I started working on this." I'm like, "Oh, cool, awesome." Yeah, the only thing uh, from from my point of view is I have to be fast enough that uh, Cooks doesn't outpace me and releases uh, his version before I do. <laughs> That sounds like healthy capitalistic competition to me. Except it's free and open source. <laughs> and permissionless. <laughs> All right, so what, one more random idea in Shinobi's head. Let, let's see if Kooks has been thinking about this too. Um, are you guys familiar with the concept of a virtual lightning channel? Nope. Well, wouldn't that be the lightning channel factory again? Uh, no, this this is actually an old. Uh, I think Rene Picard actually came up with this, but um, literally just a a lightning channel, so to say, um, that doesn't actually have any corresponding UTXOs on chain. So just just kind of a, a non-existent fake channel that's just there to kind of record the fact that hey, this lightning node keeps signing off um, with its key that it owes me money. And, you know, I'm just kind of thinking long term, uh, I, I know that would probably be pretty complex on the back end to implement, but that would be kind of another way where you could have users of LN Bank have a, a very strong cryptographic proof that like, hey, um, this guy owes me money. You know what I mean? Can you elaborate on how is how this is uh, supposed to work? Well, pretty much you would have to tweak a lightning node so that it would sign um, pretty much non-existent channels, but it, it would literally just be like, imagine a transaction with no input to it and just outputs um, that's never actually valid on chain, but you would still be signing that um, like with your lightning node keys, with the keys in that transaction and kind of create this proof here that you know, this, this real lightning node and this person who doesn't have a real lightning channel kind of have a, an agreement between them that money is owed one way or the other. I feel like there might be a chance that the, the lightning server owner, the lightning node owner would just say, if, it, if the amount is big enough, he would just say, fuck this, and he would just rug pull the whole thing, right? If he just deletes the, the lightning node, Pull, basically, he sweeps all the money and funds off the lightning channels and node runs off. Uh, I mean, wouldn't that kind of be the same thing? And it, it wouldn't really matter because the, the pop key would disappear at that point, right? And uh, the owner would disappear with the money as well. Well, yeah, but you could still try games like, you know, where did those funds go on chain? Are they popping up on a new lightning node? Like, you would still have some kind of recourse to like point at an identity and tell people they're not trustworthy you know what i mean yeah i i remember there was a project from uh what's his name shishok uh, or nadav I, I forgot what his last name is he had a project i think it was called bitrated where you would have a pub key and you would basically have a reputation kind of linked to that pub key saying like basically this guy is realistic he does his he does what he's uh, saying he does and all that stuff and if he scams somebody, people would just say this guy's a scammer and it would be uh, listed somewhere, like on a public directory somewhere. Uh, maybe that could have worked out pretty well for this kind of scenario too. Yeah, it's kind of my thinking. Yeah, but that's like a, a more 
how was that? That was that was pretty much just like a public directory somewhere where uh, everyone had every user has a um, has a pub key, and then you would have a, like a feedback system built on top of that. Uh, I kind of want to kind of do that for BTC Pay as well, especially if we start doing like a communication layer between instances and stores, just to make sure that everybody is you know uh, has some kind of reputation to fall back to in case you know they start fucking people over. Mm -hmm. And this could also be a, a nice place where fidelity bonds fit into things. Yeah, I haven't looked into it that much about that. So I, I read I read a bit about them in uh, in Belcher's uh, what was it coin swap specification, but I haven't really looked into how that works uh, completely. Is it just collateral that you just put on onto your as a backing to your reputation? I guess. Well, I mean, you could do it a few different ways. Um, I think Vulture's thinking is just kind of time lock um, coins and then kind of prove you're taking the opportunity cost of that. But there's no real way beyond, um, you know, shaming an identity to really respond to that. But, um, you know, if, if you guys have been following all the, the work that uh, is going on at Shared Bits with discrete log contracts, um, they actually, um, the DAB over there just figured out how to kind of make a threshold um, of oracles that's actually tolerant to a little um, margin of error on numeric values they sign. Um, you know, you, you could potentially have fidelity bonds for LN Bank or BTC Pay instances um, locking up in a discrete log contract. Um, their fidelity bond funds instead of just time locking them and actually try to create some kind of incentive where even if the user, um, you know, isn't the one to claim funds, like still find some way to burn um, that operator's funds if they misbehave. Like a proof of reserves uh, thing. Yeah. But um, like, you know, imagine um, an interactive Oracle set up with a federation of Oracles and some user comes to the Oracles with a proof that that operator um, isn't honoring their balance. Well, if enough of the Oracles acknowledge that and then sign the necessary proof, um, actually like claim or burn those fidelity bond funds instead of just, you know, having the ability to point at them and go, don't trust that guy in the future. Yeah. Sounds like something for uh, version 0 0.2. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think I, that I, this is a, a big design space that you guys could probably hack away at for years. I mean, I know that Nicholas has been working on uh, on a DLC, well, discrete log contract implementation in CTRIP as well. Um, and I, I think it actually works completely fine at this point. I, I just don't know if the specific, I remember the specification was completely, wasn't completely the same as the one from uh, Shirt Bits. Um, but there is a, all the functionality that would be needed for these kind of things. So, um, yeah, I, I guess that would be quite possible at this point, especially since there's a implementation that could work with BTC pays almost straight out of the box. Hashtag two weeks. Uh, maybe three weeks, man. Yeah, I just, you know, I just see so much long-term potential in this project beyond just you know solving some issues for merchants. I mean, like I think for the last year or two, like I've more been thinking about Lightning in the long term as kind of a micro banking layer. Um, rather than something end users are on the whole going to interact with individually. Like I, you know, and I, I see that path as much more practical and scalable. And if you guys can keep building this out in BTC pay with how widely adopted that is getting, like, you know, I think you guys are really kind of starting to pave the road to making that a, a practical way for lightning to scale. Yeah, maybe. But uh, as as I mentioned in the introduction, there are other projects uh, that that are doing similar things as well. So uh, this this isn't uh, a really new concept. And yeah, but but then again, uh, having this as part of BTC Pay and uh, making it easy to to deploy 
and uh, backup, etc. Uh, this will be uh, a big thing. Yeah, I think so too. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's, I think, like, what will be the big differentiator between you and other attempts at these kinds of things is, you know, I, I know um, the Blue Wallet, I think theirs is the LND hub. Um, and the other one, I forget the name of. Like, yeah. is, is, there a, is there a simple one-click spin this up? Like, can you set that up through a web browser? Like, you know, it, it's nice tools to be out there, but the barrier to operating that is a lot higher than things like BTC Pay. Yeah, I, I haven't set up an LND hub instance uh, yet, but uh, as far as the uh, LN bits goes, uh, it's it's already integrated into a few uh, node setups. I think uh, Umbrel has it with their uh, new App Store release, and uh, LN bits can be easily set up using the Raspi Blitz. Um, but then again, LN bits has has uh, kind of a different focus. I I mean the uh, my my initial plan uh, when when I started to work on this was to uh, integrate Allen bits into BTC Pay, but I couldn't uh, really make it work because uh, they are they are doing some things differently, and uh, I struggled uh, with getting uh, all of that to work. Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, not every piece and every software stack is going to be totally portable. Yeah, and uh, building Allen Bank uh, with uh, the the technology we are also using inside of BTC Pay, being able to easily use the the API and Lightning client, uh, which are also part of the uh, BTC Pay library. Uh, it makes makes it way easier to uh, to build our stuff uh, and uh, yeah uh, progress uh, fastly with that. Yeah, I mean it shouldn't be that hard to to actually get a little bank running if you have BBC Pay server installed using our the Docker install. It should take like two to five minutes to actually get it up and running. Very nice, gentlemen. Very nice. Yeah, thanks for your uh, interest in the project and uh, all the shout out you uh, you gave me already on Twitter. Oh, believe me, I'm going to keep doing that and keep pecking at things um, when you get stuff released. <laughs> so now you can uh, nag uh, to get on the podcast because uh, that's what we've done just now. <laughs> so, Kooks, you have any... Uh... Other long-term fun ideas with this uh, that I haven't uh, already brought up a corollary of? Well, Ellen Bank is just one piece of the puzzle for me uh, in terms of BTC Pay. Um, it, eventually, we're going to migrate it from, uh, I, like we said earlier, we're going to migrate it from a separate project to also plug in, uh, to the plugin system inside BTC Pay. Um, once that happens, most likely we'll start doing some more crazier things. Um, uh, I can't exactly imagine what it could be, but I mean, um, if you can have multiple BTC Pay server instances communicating with each other, you can actually create that dual lightning channel that we were talking about as well. So if somebody sends a Bolt 11 invoice that's on one instance, um, maybe we can kind of find a way to do it easier than just doing it over the lightning network. Like if you have custodial, custodial solutions on top. Maybe we can find a way to do it slightly better since you, you already have control of all the bonds and the people communicating with each other have another layer on top. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly. Um, most of the stuff I, uh, I have planned around the plugin system involves some crazy over the top ideas, which will probably take a few months to do so. Crazy over the top ideas only take a few weeks, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, once we get the DLC system into BTC Pay, it's gonna be kind of fun as well because you can do all sorts of stuff. Are you are you kind of to like shift a little bit from Ellen Bank? Uh, are you are you guys planning on kind of allowing a BTC Pay instance to function as an oracle for anything? Yeah, actually, uh, Nicholas really wanted to do it. So it will probably happen sooner than later. 
Mm. And I mean, if we have if we have a DLC system built into BTC Pay, either through directly into BTC Pay or as a plugin, we'll end up with all sorts of stuff. So escrow systems, trading systems, you know, maybe even um, some nicer federation stuff as well. Oh and, man! And, yeah, I mean. If you have an escrow system inside BTC Pay between instances and between stores in those instances, you can kind of do trade deals, right? So, um, let's say let's say you also have as well uh, like liquid asset support on them. Um, if you have like a, a stable coin on on, on a liquid asset, um, and you have a DLC plugin system where you can do these trades, because I I know that Ruben Samson did a did a. I forgot what it was. was it a video or was it a guide or maybe a spec somewhere or a document I forgot it, he did like a an atomic sway uh, an atomic swap between between blockchains with like one less few uh, transactions needed to do it so oh, one thing you do atomic swap yeah that's the one that's and it's uh, it's with DLCs as well so um, one thing you can do is basically say if you've got a, a BTC pay store and you connect it with another person's BTC pay store, you can do these agreements. Say you receive like a thousand dollars through a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin and you want to exchange it for a stable coin of equivalent value. You can have deals and you can uh, do it like automatically in the background, just with uh, a trust in a trustless nature as well, using these atomic swaps and DLC plugins. Hot damn. I think I'm going to have to twist your arm, Kooks, to come back on real soon just to talk about BTC Pay in general. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not, I guess. Um, I, I mean, they're all, it's all crazy ideas that will take a while to get implemented. I mean, even the API system, it took like, I don't know, two years of refactoring and optimizing stuff to actually get it to where it is right now. And it, it's still like, a year away from being a proper API that I wanted, that I wanted, uh, like as soon as I joined the project. I mean, still, like I, I brought you guys on just to talk about LN Bank, and in the course of this, um, you guys have completely shifted uh, my view on the potential of BTC Pay as a whole <laughs> and where you guys are, are trying to take it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you always have to aim big, right? I can't disagree with that. Well, I mean, shit, I'm kind of all plumbed out of uh, questions and roads to go down. Uh, you guys have anything else you want to bring up or uh, touch on? Nope, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good too for now. Well, I mean, a little abrupt end here, but this was a real fun conversation, guys. And I am really looking forward to how this shapes up over the next two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Thanks for having us. It was fun yeah, talking to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope everybody listening enjoyed, and we will catch you later, punks. Awesome. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, you have to